There really weren't much in the way of differences. Uh, some studies were more uh, focused on ethnicity. And um, I think the other surprising factor from my point of view was um, ethnic minorities were more significantly associated with uh, sleep disturbance than was obesity associated with sleep disturbance. So uh, there may be more issues about um, different sleep patterns and different ethnic groups that need to be addressed that could help with our dealing with childhood obesity because ethnic minorities are disproportionately affected with obesity. So uh, again, we're at the chicken and egg. We're not quite clear what's responsible for what, but it suggests that the population uh, of um, minority children are at higher risk, both for obesity and for sleep disturbed breathing. And to the extent that they are interrelated with each other, uh, their risk is much higher than you might expect. I think the most important issue is that uh, we're clear that sleep duration is, sh is shorter now than it used to be. Uh, that there is a, a very clear association between obesity and uh, short sleep. Uh, so therefore there's no reason not to be counseling uh, and encouraging people to have their children get more sleep. Um, and I think it's a pretty safe thing, even if we aren't clear that it's going to make them lose weight. There are several studies looking at mechanisms, um, like how do the hormonal changes that are sleep, seen with sleep uh, deprivation affect um, uh, obesity. Um, so the mechanistic link is very supportive of the idea that sleep may be causing some of the obesity problem, uh, but that needs to be refined. Those studies are primarily done uh, so far only in adults, not really in children. So we're not clear that it's always the same for children as it is for adults. Um, there are studies to look at the behavioral abnormalities that you see in children as a function of sleep uh, deprivation. Uh, there is a hypothesis that low oxygen hypoxemia is really the cause of the behavioral abnormalities. There's some animal studies in that, but that hasn't been proven as a human uh, mechanism. Um, and we haven't demonstrated that any of these interventions, so changing the oxygen level, um, uh, getting that extra hour sleep, actually results in the change in the weight or the mood. Fortunately, children, by the time they reach adolescent, are unlikely to uh, lose weight down to a normal size if they're already obese. Um, and they already manifest frequently um, the cardiovascular morbidities that are seen with obesity, so diabetes, high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia, which all have the potential to shorten their lifespan and to increase medical costs. Uh, because it takes a lot uh, medically to manage a patient with these complications on medications, on doctor visits, on secondary complications from the primary disorder. Um, so it's a major cost to society um, if we allow our children all to become uh, very obese and are in their 20s and 30s uh, exceptionally large. I would just say that sleep is a very important physiologic process that many of us underestimate uh, in terms of its value uh, and that one should be working to try and get uh, appropriate amounts of sleep which seem to be at least for the adolescent and adult in the range of seven hours of sleep a night um, because it seems to make a big difference for both children and adults.